Hey, yeah. Right, I'm in a noisy part of the park here, so I'm going to try and go really quick. Apologise for all the background noise. Uh, this one has been asked, I've been asked on how I would lead a matrix networked organisation. So this is what I'm going to run at here. And it does have a, a consequence. So here's my network right, that I'm going to be leading. And then what happens is, is this per, each person belongs to another network that's not in my control that I don't lead. And then people within that network and in other networks, again, that I don't lead, that I'm not even aware of. Okay, so what can happen is something happens in this network that because this person's in it, it impacts them. As a consequence of that, it impacts this network. And because this person in my team is in that network, it eventually impacts my team and my organisation. Now, I don't even know that network exists. So I have a huge amount of multiple dependencies. Especially if you imagine every individual here uh, is actually in their own networks and their own networks. So actually we're talking about a multi-dimensional, uh, hugely complex matrix structure where anything, so the level of dependencies are huge. Because of those level of dependencies, my organisation becomes much more uncertain. Things that I'm not aware of have little impacts on my organisation that creates uncertainty. Now I'm the leader. One of my goals, I often feel when I'm a leader, is to generate the sense of direction, the sense of certainty. And of course this is really hard when I've got so many dependencies that I'm not in control of, or not even aware of. So, what of course I would normally do as a leader is do the vision, the culture, the goals and the strategy. But of course they're constantly changing. I'm constantly on the back foot, so I can't actually deliver my leadership role in this level of connected dependencies. So, what I would do if I was a leader, what I would do is embed in the idea of choice. So I would change my leadership style with less focus on the vision, the culture, and I would say, right, as a leader, each individual person can make their own choices about how they do their work better. Okay, so make it individual choices. So what happens is the direction of travel, the level of certainty, becomes a sort of organic measure where we all, which is the results of our collective choice making. Okay, so the certainty is choice, and then we're allowed to be sort of organically respond and adapt to all the dependencies that keep hitting us. Now, key to this, obviously, is people make good choices. And one of the things I've got of making good choices, especially, and it's my job as a leader to help them make good choices. Okay, well, one of the first things I've got is, and crucially important, is you make individual choices about yourself. You don't tell others what to do. Okay, so um, this person makes a choice about what they do for their work, what they do for their work. They don't make choices to tell each other what to do. Now, the reasons I do that um, is because in this multi-networked world, nobody knows all the dependencies. There's just too many. So... So nobody can really tell each other what to do because no one truly understands the consequences of those choices on other people. They do on themselves, but not on other people. Okay? So if I'm as a leader and I'm relying on my staff to make choices, I need one of my key leadership roles is to help them make good choices. So what I would do if I was leading is I would focus on and know that a simplified choice is easier to make. Try and get that on the screen. A simplified choice is easier to make. So what my primary goal as a leader over here would be to find ways of helping all my staff simplify their choices so that it's easier for them to make. And that's how I would create certainty in the networked organisation. Total focus would be on simplifying choices. Hopefully that answers the question on how to lead in a network world. And I will see you soon. Bye.